great day to live. All praise and glory be unto our Father in the mighty, precious name of Jesus. And by the leading of the Holy Spirit. The message or the topic for uh, this moment is about stewardship. As I converse a while ago with the Holy Spirit, what shall I deliver? What message do you want me to discuss in the program? And the word steward is so clear in my mind and clear in my hearing. Teach on stewardship. And so allow me to pray at this very moment. Father, we honor you because we were created to honor, to bring pleasure, and to give glory and to bless your holy name and to ascribe all greatness to thy name. So bless as I speak. You know my heart that by myself I cannot do this, but by the power of thy Holy Spirit, let him speak through me and let the clarity of the message be given unto me so that it can flow through my lips in the hearing of multitude of people. Thank you so much that to obey is better than sacrifice. And to obey, remove all fear. So I once again thank you for this wonderful opportunity. In Jesus Christ's name. Amen. So this topic about stewardship. I will deliver this in three parts. The first part of these three parts, as a steward of properties, a steward of several laborers, steward of riches, and then the second part is about Stewardship of the mysteries of God. And then the third part is the stewardship of the manifold grace of God. And I prayed for the revelation concerning this stewardship. Because everything that was created, all were created, and God is the owner of all his creation. And God is in total control, the Father is in total control of all his creation. He dominates his creation. And so, because of this wonderful truth that he control, he dominates all his creation. I made that decision to surrender and submit my entire being and entire life for his control, for his leading, for his direction by his spirit and all in the name of Jesus. So the first part of this topic about stewardship is about excellent stewardship. 
the word excellent by itself, the meaning, simple and clear meaning, is extremely good. Extremely good. And the word extreme, it's the uppermost of all the goodness. And I will use Matthew 25 in teaching about this excellent stewardship. It's about a steward who has entrusted a steward or three stewards who have had been entrusted with several amount of money according to their abilities. So in Matthew 25, verse 14, For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. Particular in this verse is a man traveling from a far country. And this, this trip into a far country is like the kingdom of heaven of whom the king traveled far from the kingdom. And before he, he left, he called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. Servants. And then in verse 25 or 15, and unto one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one. To every man according to his several ability, and he straightway took his journey. So the owner of the kingdom, or the king of the kingdom, bid goodbye to his three servants. And before he left, he entrusted talents. And talents is a measure of something that is of importance. Like, for instance, gold. Five talents of gold or five talents of silver. So it is about, uh, about uh, gold or silver. So the first one, the first servant, he entrusted five talents. And to the second servant, he entrusted two talents. And to the third servant, one talent. And the owner of these eight talents, the owner is the king. The owner is the one who bid farewell and traveled to a far place for a season. And these properties that belong to the owner or to the king of the kingdom, he entrusted it. And the way he have chosen the tree is based on their several ability. According to his, to every man according to his several ability. The word several denotes plurality, but worthy to point out is that though several is used, but it pertains to singular ability. 
to every man according to his several ability. And this ability is known to the to the owner of this uh, these talents perhaps for uh, so many years these three servants work for him so there is a personal knowledge and understanding of their abilities their capabilities and their talents and the talents is about uh, their skill about how good they are at at any given chores we praise god and we thank you so much dear friends and partners for supporting us that we will be able to deliver and share the goodness of the lord from the Women's Correctional Institute and to all the people we have shared the free hamburger in the road street of Binyan Laguna. Again, never stop helping, never stop donating, never stop participating. God is so good and He sees your effort and that's why God will bless you exceedingly abundantly above what we expect. Again, partners, we cannot do this alone. But thanks for now and thank you very much for doing your share in the kingdom of God. Are you tired of viewing and watching the same old program? Negative and bad news? Thank God we are offering Great Day to Live, a program hosted by Brother Greg Durante that you can watch via cable and satellite TV on Trinity Broadcasting Network, Bean Channel 31 on local antenna, and cable operating system all over the Philippines. You can watch us Monday to Thursday, 9.30 in the evening, Friday, 10.30 in the evening, and Saturday, 11 o'clock in the evening. You can also watch us on Church Channel via satellite on Monday to Saturday, 12 midnight, 6 o'clock in the morning, 12 noon, and 6 p.m. We are preaching the gospel beyond borders, seeing that everybody will be healed and saved and receive their miracles in Christ Jesus. So several ability to the three of them and straightway took his journey. Three stewards with different ability. I desire that all of us will understand that Every human being cannot own anything that God created because God is the owner of everything that he created. But it's human being, it's person can be a steward of all the properties of God. In Psalms, in Psalms 50, verse 1, Psalms 50, verse 1, The mighty God, even the Lord, hath spoken and called the earth from the rising of the sun unto the going down thereof. So the mighty God, the Lord, hath spoken and called the earth from the rising of the sun so he spoken and called. So he speak and he called. So he is speak to the earth. He called to the earth. So as he has speak and call, then he has spoken and called the earth from the rising of the sun unto the going down thereof. So meaning from dawn. From the rising of the sun and the setting or going down of the sun. And in verse 2, Out of Zion, the perfection of beauty, God hath shined. In these two verses, though the first verse is about the sun, yet the second verse is about 
God who shined. So from the going up of the sun to the going down of the sun, the perfection of beauty. So the beauty of the shining of the sun is in reality, God is at work on those shining of the sun. In Psalms 24 verse 1, so that we shall understand. So he has spoken and he has called the earth. The earth is the Lord's, meaning the owner of the earth, this planet earth. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The world and they that dwell therein. So the earth and the fullness of that earth inside the earth is the world. Inside the earth is the world and inside the world is the inhabitants. All the created being inside the world and the world is inside the earth. So the world of the plants, the world of the fishes, the world of the, the fowls of the air, the world of the human being. And all that is in the world, the world that is in the earth and the whole earth is the property of Almighty God. So I cannot claim that I own anything on the earth. I have to always speak that the owner, even of my life, even of my physical body, the owner of this is the Lord. So it will be sound for me to always declare that everything is owned by the Lord and that is true according to the word of God. And also we need to understand that Jesus himself, who is the Lord, in Romans 14, 7, Romans 14, 7, for none of us liveth to himself, and no man dieth to himself. Verse 8, For whether we live, we live unto the Lord, and whether we die, we die unto the Lord. Whether we live, therefore, or die, we are the Lord's. Once again, this verse of scripture is speak of ownership. So I am the ownership of the Lord. And if you will accept that you are owned by the Lord, it will be good for you. It is not wise not to admit that you are the property of God. Because accepting that I am owned by God, I am positioning my entire being into the mighty protective covering of God. Because I am owned by God, and that is true. And if you accept with me that you are the property of God, once again I tell you, it will be good for you. So, admission that we are the property of God, that we uh, are the ownership of God, then bear in mind that all that we are going to do on the face of the earth is to serve the owner. So, stewardship is serving the owner. To be a servant, it is serving the owner. Let us go back to Matthew 20, 25, 20. Matthew 25, verse 20. And so he that had received five talents come and brought other five talents, saying, Lord, thou deliverest unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained beside them 
five talents more. The owner of the talents is so happy because his choosing the first servant he is so happy because the five talents that he entrusted this first servant is so wise in his stewardship that he delivered another five beside the five that he received. So the five talents entrusted to him by his Lord and Master became ten talents. And so the Master is very happy because he is right in choosing the first servant and he is also right in giving him much bigger talents because I believe that he understands the ability, the capability, the capacity, the responsibility of the first servant. So he entrusted more. I desire that uh, a picture is being drawn into your imagination because life here on earth is a life of stewardship. And so in verse 21, his Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. So a commendation is received by the first servant. His Lord said unto the first servant, Well done. So stewardship has to be done very well. So excellent is doing it very well. Good and faithful servant. So the well doing is the result of the goodness and the faithfulness of the first servant. So these are characteristics. These are qualities of a servant that will prosper on whatever entrusted to him. Because he is a good and he is a faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou unto the joy of thy Lord. His Lord, thy Lord. The desire of the Lord, that is why he entrusted the five talents to the first servant, he is preparing that servant to much higher responsibility. I will make thee ruler over many things. Let this be in your mind that all the things that God entrusted to us, if we are good and faithful in using that things which he entrusted to us, he is awaiting for our promotion and that promotion will come when we use the talents when we use what had been entrusted to us just 
a personal inventory. Make a personal inventory of what God has entrusted to you. What are those things that God has endowed you with? What are those talents that God has entrusted to you? And if you discover those talents and use it, then in using it repeatedly, then you will have a masterful skill in using those talents. Therefore, you will be good. And if you repeatedly doing it, then you will be faithful. So good and faithful meaning that though he has only five talents, he repeatedly, perhaps the first year, he used the five talents and perhaps he gained only half talents. But he keep on using that five and one half talents. And another year that uh, five talents become six talents. And again, in the third year, he keep on using that. So in doing the same thing all over, again and again, he is becoming skillful and he is developing goodness in using the talents from five to six after two or three years perhaps. And then the fourth year, that five talents became seven then pip here that five talents become eight. Six year become nine talents. And then on the ninth year, perhaps, that five talents become ten talents. So, worthy to note is the time element involved. As I understand, God has given us time Talent and treasure. Time can be measured either by second, minute, hour, day, weeks, months, years. And so if we use the talents entrusted to us, then we shall be growing and become skillful and as God see us on doing the talents that entrusted to us, then God will give the increase. Hallelujah. If he see that we are faithful in what has been entrusted to us, he will give the increase. It's time that we use the talents, an increase will be given. And repeatedly using the talents, then the increase is the increase is appreciating. It is greater than before because I believe that when positive thing comes, then the negative things will will be pushed very far away we would like to invite you in our friday night revival meeting this coming february 6 february 13 february 20 february 27 6 30 in the evening at second floor medical building or Tigas avenue green hills and one come and experience the power of god his lord said unto him well done thou good and faithful servant Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou unto the joy of thy Lord. So the Lord is joyful. Why not? He is a good and faithful servant. And he is right in Assigning to him the five talents is good and faithful. And then the second servant in verse 22, he also that had received two talents came and said, Lord, thou delivered unto me two talents. 
Behold, I have gained two other talents beside them. Again, there is a gain. From using that little thing of two talents, he gained, he, he, he doubled that two talents into four. And the same way, in verse 23, the second servant, his Lord said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servants. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. So the Lord is awaiting to give the promotion. From being a servant, they will be a ruler. And to receive that new position of rulership, they pass through stewardship or servanthood. And he did splendidly well. They excel in their service. They excel in their management of the five and the two talents of these two servants. They are so efficient and they are so effective and they are so talented because they doubled what has been entrusted to the two of them. And the Lord, their master, is joyful. So when the Lord is joyful and the reason, the source of his joy is because of the goodness and the faithfulness of his servant. And I desire that all of us will be good and faithful servant as well. What are the talents God has entrusted to you? So it's of one, it's one of us received talents. And he has given us time. And if we we love the talents that God has given to us, the talents will be our treasure. And in due time, we shall increase the results, the effect of the talents that we repeatedly do. And in the years after the start of our using the talents, then there will be an increase. So these two servants were promoted to rulership. You are faithful in few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Why ruler? Why not just a steward? Ruler means that they have gained expertise. They have masterfully excel in the way that they use what were entrusted to both of them. But let us look at the third servant. In verse 24, then he which had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew thee that thou art an hard man. Reaping where thou hast not sown, and gathering where thou hast not, has not strode. The Lord, the owner of the talents, is so wise that he have known the three servants. 
And because of his knowledge of the characteristic, the attitude of these three servants, he entrusted according to their talents. He entrusted to each one of them according to their ability. And this entrusting the talents is for the three servants to be promoted. So a very good lesson of this parable of the talents is that there is promotion whenever we use the talents that has been entrusted to us. I, for one, I started as I just share the word. And I continue on sharing the word. I teach the word. And as, as I go on through the years from 1979, I keep on sharing the word. Keep on sharing the word. Keep on sharing the word. The only talent to, for me is to testify the word. And then another talent is added to me, several ability. Then I now, from only few people, then God is promoting me to teach on several more people added to my start of sharing into few people. Then he add some other people. So this is promotion. It is always directly proportional it is directly proportionate to how we apply the talent that has been entrusted to us. So from testimony to teaching to preaching and then to going to many places at first in the province and that God brought me to the city and then God brought me to several provinces and then Hear this, if you are faithful to what God has entrusted to you from my own country, then God promoted me to several countries. So promotion comes when you use the talents. At first, it is small. At first, it is few only, but as you apply and use the talents, it will be gaining more talents as you apply it repeatedly again and again, again and again, and again and again. And how shall you excel, excel in the talents? By listening, by meditating, by reading the word. And so those who will be promoted are those who are actively participating By using the talents entrusted to us. And this third servant is a coward. A coward is someone who doubts on his ability. A coward is somebody who is afraid to use his talents. A coward is afraid to be mistaken. A coward is afraid to fail. So there are several fearful thoughts that made him unable to use that one talent. He never overcame all the fear that started in his heart and develop in his mind and those fearsome thoughts enslave him. That is why when a coward who will not use the talents entrusted to him, he will protect that one talent and that one talent will remain one and he will have reason and his reason is this. I knew thee that thou art an hard man. 
Hello, partners and friends. Thank you for your support for this ministry. Without your generous support, we will not be able to air the gospel of Jesus on radio and television. And as an act of appreciation for your love gift of 1,000 pesos this month, we will send you a great day to live watch right at the very doorstep of your house. Thank you very much. And remember, he who wins soul is wise. God bless you and keep on partnering and let us together advance the kingdom of God. So his fear is his wrong perception of his Lord and Master. And what is his perception of his Lord? You are a hard man. Reaping where thou hast not sown and gathering where thou hast not strowed. Because the Lord is the owner of everything. Hardship might take place we might pass through hard testing but as long as we trust the honor of the talents as long as we always remember that I have to do everything so that I will increase the talents that he have entrusted to me through the years, the talents increase. And it increased because I applied it repeatedly. I applied it again and again from house testimony, from house teaching, it became broadcast teaching. And my statement, my creed and my motto, just one person, who received the message. And until now, it is only one person who will receive the message. Heaven will be happy because one sinner saved, all of the angels of heaven are rejoicing. So there will be no moment of sadness because I am not after many, but I am after only one soul being Save one lost soul being found. There will be joy in heaven. So to be good and faithful. Trust the honor. Believe the honor. Always think of the honor as a good Lord. Always believe and that belief is a relationship. Because I believe that God has called me. I believe that God has entrusted me a few talents. I believe that God who entrusted me few talents. I believe that God is faithful to increase the talents. But the increase of the talents is dependent on how I am exercising it. On how I am putting it to use. Because the word of God, if applied, it will magnify. It will multiply. It will increase. The first two were given rulership. But the third one, the coward. In verse 25, And I was afraid, so this is the condition of the heart and mind of a coward. I was afraid, and the coward who has talent is afraid to sing, is afraid to speak, afraid to fail. I have failed so many times. I went bankrupt so many times. But I stand up and again, Lord, what shall I start again? When and what shall I do? After its failure, after its bankruptcy, I stand and I have to move on. I have to go on because I have the talents. And the talents are giftings from the Lord. So the third servant has never overcame that 
fearsome thoughts. I was afraid and went and hid thy talents in the earth. Lo, there thou hast that is thine. So he berated his master, which should not be the case. Because the master, the Lord, has to be honored. The master, the Lord, has to be respected. The master, the Lord, has to be worshipped and idolized. Because the master, even though I failed, the master, my master, even though I go bankrupt, the master who, even though I have committed many mistakes, he is looking at my standing up because righteous people of God, when he fall down, he will raise him up again. Glory. So fear of failure will be removed. Fear of not performing will be removed. And so what will quadruple and so what will increase is the courage. Courage is believing God inside. Perseverance is repeatedly believing God that he will mightily perform what he has entrusted to me. Hallelujah. And then, instead of a promotion, what he received, the third servant, is a demotion. Promotion is up, demotion is down. And in verse 26, his Lord answered and said unto him, Thou wicked and faithful, slothful servant, lazy, thou knewest that I reap where I sowed not and gather where I have not strode. Verse 27, Thou oughtest therefore to have put my money to the exchangers. If you are wise and you are afraid, you should have invested my money where it will gain increase. So if you are afraid, then you should have invested my money that I have entrusted to you. Thou oughtest therefore to have put my money to the exchangers. And then at my coming, I should have received mine own with usury. So why is it that Jesus used this parable of the Lord? Gaining 100% interest to what he has entrusted to the tree. Remember this, when God entrusted to you one peso, the Lord, the owner of us, desire that it will be two pesos. Or one dollar, it will be two dollars. And that is usury. But remember this, that 100% increase of the use of the talents that God has entrusted to us. And as for me, I believe, that God has received the increase of what he has entrusted to me. I repeat, I started on personal witnessing, sharing the word of God, and then it became a house testimony, and then church congregational testimony, and then I keep on using the talents, and the talents increase. And then God is promoting me. And then God promoted me and keep on promoting me because I keep on using the talents. If you desire to be promoted by God, use the talents. Because God will make an increase and he will make it double. Glory. 
So I rise because of the promotion of God because it is not from the east nor from the west that promotion comes. Promotion comes from God. And those who will receive promotion are those who use the talents. And God who always see us will be the one to double the result of what we have applied for. I should have received 100% of what I have entrusted to you. Glory. So God has given us Jesus. And through Jesus, he received many souls. So as for me and as for you, you are one soul, but you have to increase. You have to attract many souls. For the master. And then. In verse 28. Take therefore the talent from him. And give it unto him. Which had ten talents. On the two. Whom his Lord entrusted. The highest. Promotion is given. To those. To the one who received the five talents, who increases to ten. So his promotion is greater than the second servant who has the two talents who made it four. And then in verse 29. For unto everyone that hath shall be given. For unto everyone that hath shall be given and he shall have abundance. But from him that hath not shall be taken away even that which he hath. So the challenge for all of us, God has given you the talent. Use the talent. Invest the talent. And God will promote you. Continue on using the talent. Be good at it. Repeatedly do it. And you will be showing to God that you are faithful to the talents entrusted to you. Brothers, sisters, God will promote you from servanthood to rulership. You will rule so many places and God will bring you to places that you have known, you have not known before. There will be a great increase when you understand this parable of these three servants, the talents of this, these three servants. And in closing, these three servants is divided. The two, the ten, and the four talents that belongs to the first two servants and the third servant with the one talent in verse 33 or in verse 29 let us go back to 29 let us go to 33 25 33 and he shall set the sheep on his right hand but the goats on the left i believe that the first and the second servant are the Ship and the third servant is the goat. To the two, he set the Lord, his master, set him on his right hand. And then the third servant, who is a coward, who is unwise, who is a fool, who is wicked, on the left. And he is considered as goats or goat singular. And then in verse 37, Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, So the sheep is considered as righteous. And a righteous person always believed his master. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when so with thee, and hungered, and fed thee, or thirsty, and gave thee drink? If you will be sensitive, 
that five talents will be used to supply food for the hungry. That two talents will be used to feed the hungry. To give drinks to the thirsty. <laughs> Glory. And then in verse 38, And so with thee a stranger and took thee in, or naked and clothed thee. So this is referring to a lodging place, a hotel, a dormitory. These are businesses that will help those who don't have a lodging place or a house to live. Or naked, this is apparel, this is clothing, this is dress. Glory. And so in verse 39, Or when so we the sick or in prison and came unto thee. So these are businesses. If you have this great revelation of an idea, then you will Pray for the sick and they shall recover. You will go to the prison and those prisoners will have hope and desire to be freed from their prison cell. And then in verse 40, And the king shall answer, From the Lord, from the master, the Lord, then the king. Then the king shall answer and say unto the righteous, Verily I say unto you, inasmuch as you have done it unto one of the least of this, my brethren, you have done it unto me. Do you desire to use your talents along those areas that you can supply the need of those who are hungry, the need of those who are naked, the need of those who are in prison? And so and so forth. Be blessed as you receive the revelation through this message. Let us pray. Father, we aspire to serve you. And we desire to be blessed so that we shall be a blessing. We shall be rewarded because we are obedient. And we keep on repeatedly doing what you have entrusted, using and doing what you have entrusted to us. So bless all the people that they may be able to receive the truth that has been introduced and illuminated by this message. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Receive the honor and the glory, Father, in Jesus Christ's name. Amen and amen.